Good morning, class. Today we're going to be moving on with the next step of our chapter in chemistry. We're going to try to see if we can predict the products that occur in chemical reactions. We're going to do just three of our types today. We're going to do synthesis, decomposition, and single replacement reactions. We're going to cover double replacement, neutralizations, and combustions in a later video. So, how can you predict what a reaction is going to make when you have just the reactants? Well, there are four steps that allow you to do it with excellent ease. First one, you have to identify the type of reaction that is most likely going to take place. Then, you use the patterns that you, of the reaction type that you've identified to give yourself a guess, and then you use your periodic table to make sure that your ion charges balance out, and finally, you wrap up by balancing the final equation. Those four steps should allow you to predict the products of any type of reaction. This is incredibly helpful to all chemists because you don't want to do something blindly. It is often dangerous when, that, when you try to do science blindly. Let's go ahead and try to apply these four steps. Identify, use patterns, periodic table, and balance it out. So, let's check a synthesis. How do you know whether something's a synthesis or not? Well, you can identify whether a reaction is a synthesis is because the reactants are two elements. And the pattern that synthesis reactions follow is that the two things, or your two elements, will become one product. So let's take a look at these examples. First example, magnesium and oxygen. I've actually made a mistake. This should be O2 because oxygen is a diatomic. I have magnesium and I have oxygen gas. I note that these are two elements. That helps me tell that these are a synthesis. And if I check my pattern, those two things should become one product. So I'm going to cram them together. I'm going to be making magnesium and oxygen crammed together. This is where I'm going to need to take my periodic table. I see that magnesium has a 2 plus charge and oxygen has a 2 minus charge. That means the product that they're going to make is going to be MgO because those charges balance right away. I've now predicted my products. The only thing that's left to do is to balance the equation. Now everything is balanced. This is a completed prediction of what products I'm going to get. When I react two magnesiums with one oxygen molecule, then I'm going to get two molecules of magnesium oxide. Let's try the next one. Aluminum and iodine, two elements. Using the periodic table, I can see aluminum is a 3 plus charge. Iodine is a 1 minus charge. So to make this work, I'm going to need three iodines to match the three pluses of the aluminum. Now to balance, and that's how you predict the products of synthesis reactions. You identify that's a synthesis, and then you try to bring those two separate pieces together. Here's one tricky example that is actually a synthesis. It might be hard to tell because neither of the reactants are actually elements. But this will always work whenever you have something that is called a metal oxide, which is a metal combined with an oxygen, reacting with water. Anytime you have a metal oxide reacting with water, you are actually going to create a base. And this is a tricky example of a synthesis. How can I tell that'll make the base? You can see that O from the calcium will actually combine with the water to make two OHs or two hydroxides. And that allows us to get calcium hydroxide. This is a tricky example for sure. Let's move on to decomposition. How can you tell if something's a decomposition? It's identified by having only one reactant. And the pattern for any decomposition is that one thing breaks into multiple parts. So taking a look at our first example, what can Ki break into? 
Well, it can only break into two things. It can break into K and it can break into I. Now, if you had it just like this, you would unfortunately be wrong because we remember, hopefully, that iodine is a diatomic and it never exists on its own, which means we need to add two coefficients in front to make it balance. Well, let's take a look at our second example, copper carbonate. Now, we actually saw this example in one of the videos. But how would we predict that if we for, well, how would we predict the products if we forgot what that video was showing us? Now carbonate doesn't exist commonly around, but you know what does exist commonly is CO2. We see CO2 all over the place. But if I took CO2 out from here, what's left over? Well, there's an extra O. That's what's going to be combining with this copper here. So we're going to have copper oxide and CO2. And if I took a look, I made sure that my charge is, is my copper was a 2 plus charge, and my oxygen is a 2 minus charge, so it balanced out. This example is definitely a little trickier, but hopefully you see that one thing splits into two. And if it's a compound, you're like, I don't know, see if there are any things that are really common, like carbon dioxide. Let's move on to single replacements. A single replacement is identified by having an element and a compound as your reactants. So what are single replacements going to be about? Is the element is going to switch with the similar type of part in the compound. What do I mean by similar type? I mean metals will replace metals and nonmetals will replace nonmetals. Let's take a look at these examples to help us out. Here I see that my element, aluminum, wants to replace one of the things in my compound, this iron oxide. Since aluminum is a metal, it's going to replace that metal. But before I do this, I'm going to have to use my periodic table and check their charges. Aluminum has a 3 plus charge. Iron is multivalent, but we can use the formula to help us out. We see oxygen is a 2 minus, and there are 3 oxygens, meaning that's a total of 6 minus charges. There are 2 irons, so I would need a charge of 3 plus to make a total of 6 positive charges. Now this means the aluminum can replace the iron, so I'm going to have aluminum oxide, and what's left over is iron. Balancing this shouldn't be too hard. So we can see in this example, the metal replaced the metal. What about our next example? We have chlorine gas reacting with sodium bromide. Chlorine gas is a non-metal. That means the chlorine is going to replace the non-metal, the bromine. Again, let's check our periodic table for the charges. Chlorine is a one minus, sodium is a one plus, and bromine is a 1 minus. That's going to make all of these combinations quite simple. Sodium chloride plus bromine. Though we have to remember that bromine is a diatomic. And now we're ready for balancing everything. Hopefully these examples made some sense. We're going to cover the other types of reactions and we're going to practice predicting the products of chemical reactions for the rest of the week. Have a great day.